G'day there everyone, Daniel Anderson here and welcome to this lesson and deep dive where we are going to build a co-pilot agent in SharePoint. But first, before we jump in and build things out, I just want to give a little bit of a background around agents, what the potential is, and what actually is a co-pilot agent in SharePoint. But first, the rise of the agent. As the time of this recording, we are early in 2025, and 2025 proposes to be the year of the agent. Now, according to Gartner, by 2028, 33% of enterprise software apps will include some type of agentic AI up from less than 1% in 2024. Now, I've got a sneaky suspicion that it's going to be quicker than this. I'm already seeing um, uh, companies adopt agentic AI, uh, generative AI, and in turn agents uh, across Microsoft 365 Copilot and inside of SharePoint already um, as we speak. Now, what are Copilot agents? Well, Copilot agents, there's a range of different agents that we, when we talk about uh, Copilot, SharePoint Copilot agents is just one of those. So agents expand on Copilot's knowledge and skills and, and they can now start to operate autonomously to complete tasks and automate processes that you may have. They range from simple to advanced. So simple things like retrieving information grounding uh, uh, from grounded data, which we're gonna have a look at today, reasoning and summarizing and answering user questions. And that's specifically what we will look at today. Uh, and also in the middle here, we've got task orientated agents, taking actions when asked and automating workflows and replacing those repetitive tasks for you as well. And then we go to the more advanced where we've got our our autonomous agents. They operate independently, they're dynamically, they plan, they orchestrate other agents and learn and they escalate and they rely on some type of trigger and then they can be off and running. So there are a few different, uh, through a few different stages and a few different uh, areas that agents can help facilitate the way that we work. Now the agent tooling, just quickly, we've got no code and we've got pro code. So the no code is more for your end users. We've got Copilot Studio as well, which is a little bit more advanced for the makers. And then we've got for the hardcore devs, we've got Copilot Studio and Azure AI as well. Now agents inside of SharePoint. So agents in SharePoint really do empower you and the employees across your organization to gain insights faster, make more informed decisions with agents grounded on specific SharePoint content. So every SharePoint site now comes with its own uh, co-pilot agents. The co-pilot agent that comes with the site is grounded specifically in that site collection. So your employees can create also then create their, uh, their very own tailored uh, agents on specific files, right down to a, a single file if you want to, down to folders, or bring in multiple sites so this agent is then grounded in multiple sites as well. And what's really important is this last paragraph here. So agents follow the existing SharePoint user permissions and sensitivity labels to help prevent that oversharing of sensitive information. Now, let's get stuck into building our SharePoint Copilot agent. And we're going to be focusing on a specific user scenario um, and changing the behavior of how sales teams interact and gather information all around case studies. So let's get stuck into it. Let's build it out. All right, so here we are in our SharePoint site. We've got it. Um, configured to house all of our sales team's case studies. Now we can see that we've got a couple of bits of metadata added to this library. We've got an industry or area and we've also got the technology that this case study relates to. Now, before this agent was built, what a sales team member would have had to have done is coming to here, uh, filter by, we're looking for something in the healthcare industry, and here we've got one, we'd need to open it up, we need to read it, we need to find all the, uh, all the information about it, how many users, what it was, all, the, all of that type of stuff. So we'd have to go in and out of these documents. Now, what 
might be a better approach or what has proven to be a better approach is if we can create an agent that a sales team member can actually just interact with, ask questions and come back with the relevant information um, in a more uh, chat-based and streamlined experience rather than having to go in and out of all of these documents. So as I just mentioned before, Every SharePoint site comes with its own SharePoint agent now. So we click on the little top right hand corner here and we've got an agent here that's grounded specifically in this site. The site's called Case Studies. This agent is called Case Studies. But what we can do is we can create additional agents for specific tasks. Now, as a, as a best practice or a little bit of strategic advice here, when you're creating your agents, try and keep them task specific to a single outcome that you want from that agent. And then you can use different agents for different tasks rather than trying to overload an agent with too many, um, too, too many different instructions or things like that. So what we are going to do is we are going to click on uh, we can actually either create an agent from here or we can, if I'm in the document library here, I have got this button that says create agent. Now you'll also notice if I select some documents, I have got the ability to also create an agent, but that agent is only focusing on those two documents as opposed to the entire document library. We could do the same thing with folders as well. So if we had a folder inside of this library, we could select just that folder, create an agent just with the contents inside that folder but I want this agent to be grounded in all of our case studies that we've got in our document library. So I'm gonna click on create an agent. So we can see that it comes, uh, it's automatically um, named documents agent. That's the name of the document library. You can see the agent is based on these sources inside of the document library. Now, it is ready to go and we could open the agent and have this um, ready and, and operational straight away just with that setup. But what I wanna do is I'm going to jump into edit because I wanna change the name of this agent. I wanna call this, um, uh, let's call this assistant case study. All right, so we'll call it this agent. All right, now we could add a logo here as well. Now we've got our description, all right? So this is the description, describes the purpose of this agent. So here, I've given this a little bit of a persona. So I've given it its name of, of Sally, it's the sales assistant, and this agent's here to find all the information about our case studies, okay? So that's the first part. Now, you can see on our sources tab, because I started this from our document library, you can see that I've got the documents here uh, that's already been set up for me. It's from the case study site. It's from this particular document library. Now you'll also notice that you can have up to 20 sources uh, chosen for each agent. So it doesn't necessarily, this agent is going to reside in this site, but it doesn't necessarily have to be just the content from this site. So if you had another site or folder or library that's living on a different site that you've got access to, you could use um, and add that SharePoint site as a knowledge source inside of this SharePoint Copilot agent as well, and it would then be grounded in that content as well. But for the purposes of this uh, lesson here, we're just going to use this document library. Now here is where we can configure our agent. We've got our welcome message. So we've got here, we've got welcome, uh, enhance your productivity, etc., etc. Now I'm just going to copy and paste a welcome message here. And it's the same message as I used in the description. Now we've got our starter prompts. Now you see on the right hand side here that we can give the users a bit of a helping hand here, maybe with some common uh, questions or some common things that they use. And I've now got two starter prompts. Can you find me all the case studies about Copilot and find me all the uh, case studies relating to the legal industry. 
All right, so there's two starter prompts, just to give us a little bit of a, a helping hand here. Now, the in instructions is where we can really tailor and really program this agent on who it is, how it's going to respond, what the guidelines are, and really instruct this agent on how to behave. Now, if I flick over here, I'm in Visual Studio Code here, but it gives us a good um, uh, visual on what the instructions are for this agent, okay? Now, this is actually a real-world agent that I have built with the sales team, so we've spent quite a bit of time on crafting these instructions, but it does follow a specific, uh, a particular structure. So we can see we've got, we outline the purpose. You're a case study specialist agent designed to help the sales team rapidly identify and leverage client case stories. We've got the core responsibilities and we've passed in and we're giving this agent the instructions, these are your responsibilities. We've got the response guidelines that we've outlined, all right? We've got uh, also the output standards. We want the structure of the responses using these specific components here. And then we've got our voice and our tone our limitations and boundaries, and also we just reiterate what the primary goal of this agent is. So I am going to copy this, uh, these instructions, and I'm simply going to paste that into our instructions, all right? And let me just expand this window, and we'll scroll up and down and we'll scroll up all the way up. We've got all of that. That's all good and set and ready to go. And we could now hit save. We can give it a bit of a test here if we wanted to, but I'm going to hit save and let's jump in to the SharePoint UI and start with our starter prompt. So I'm just gonna close this down. Now you see that it opens up in a window, all right? But I am going to interact with it from this Copilot uh, button across on the right. So you can see I've got my case study site agent, but now I've got my assistant case study here. It flicks over. I've got my welcome message. I've got my starter prompts. So let's have a look and see what the output is. So we can see here, can you find all the case studies about Copilot? I'm going to hit enter. Let's see what happens. So remembering that this Copilot agent is grounded in just this content, all right? So you can see I've got one, two, three, four, five, six that I've got there for my, um, that mention Copilot or have something to do with Copilot. Now this looks okay, but it's just still text-based. I like a table, right? I've got my, my citations to the actual um, case studies as well. And maybe I want a little bit more information or I want it presented in a different way. We can actually edit this um, agent after we've published it as well. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm simply going to come down to, um, actually what we'll do is let me flick over to the instructions over here. I'm going to go to the output format using these components. Please uh, present in a table. So I'm going to now copy this. I'm gonna come back to my instructions. I'm gonna control A, control V, I'm gonna hit save. All right, so now that we've saved this agent, I'm going to come back to SharePoint and let's have a look and see what the changes uh, are here. So I'm going to jump into my um, assistant case study assistant here. Can we find all the things about Copilot? And let's have a look and see what the output is. So I'm just gonna expand this out a little bit. You can see that now I've instructed it to put it into a table and now I've got my responses in a table that I could potentially now just copy and paste if I wanted to. So I could copy and paste this, copy and paste the output. I've got that output there and I can pop that into an email or something like that, that I'm, if I'm responding to a customer, even if I wanted to change the output and include different information. Maybe it's the size of the organization, the uh, the industry, and lots of other bits and pieces that we've got that, that are part of our uh, case studies. We could include that in the output, all based, all simply by using those instructions in that Copilot agent. Now, what you will also see here, after we've created our agent, it creates a file inside of this document library. So we can see that because I started this from the document library, it creates the file in the document library as well. Now, when we hop up into the Copilot agents section up in the top right, we can see that we've got 
um, approved agents for this site. So if we wanted to make this, uh, I guess a little bit more authoritative and approve this agent for this site, we can open up the agent and our three little dots here, you can see that we could set this as an approved agent. Now, when I set this as an approved agent, you can see that only site owners can choose to approve agents to be available for site visitors in the agent picker. So if I'm a an owner of this site, I can set this agent to be approved and then that will become an approved agent for this site, all right? So now, when, if I just give this a refresh, if I now pop up into the Copilot icon in the top right, go to case studies and the drop down, you can see that I've got that under the approved for this site section. You'll also notice that that agent file has now disappeared out of that document library, but where's it gone? Now, after these agents have been approved, these agents actually get moved to the site assets library. I've got a copilot folder in the site assets library and I've got an approved folder and there are my approved agents for this particular site. You'll also, you may have noticed that I can share these, okay? So I can hop into um, my assistant uh, case study here and I've got my three little links. I can copy a link for Teams, okay? So I can hit the copy and that will get me a link. I can paste this link in a Teams group chat to add this agent if I wanted to as well. I've got my settings icon, so only people with existing access or uh, the link works for everybody inside of your organization as well. And if I hit the three little dots, we can edit or we could share this as well. We can also set this as a site default. All right, so by default, well, the default agent is the site specific agent. But if I wanted to make this agent the, the default for the site, I can set this as default, okay? Set as default, it's now set. Now, if I come back and I'll close, I'll just click around a little bit, have a bit of a refresh, and I'll go back up to my copilot up in the top right hand corner. And rather than the site agent now being the default, you can see that the assistant case study is now the default. All right. So a couple of different um, ways in which we can configure these agents as well. All right. So there we go. Your co-pilot agent inside of SharePoint. Hope that gives you that aha moment and um, you know gives you some thoughts around how you could potentially start building and using Copilot agents inside of SharePoint to really change, I guess, change the behavior on how you interact with your data and how you uh, process things and get things done. So I hope that brings you some value today. Uh, Copilot agents inside of SharePoint. Now, if you want more about this content and full courses and lessons, then head over to danielanderson.co forward slash mastery. Come and join like-minded people just like yourself. Come and join me where we'll have interactive group coaching sessions, one-on-one -on -one hot seats, and lots of other access to courses and lessons and other material, material as well. So head over there, danielanderson.co forward slash mastery, and I would love to see you in that private membership.